All right, videos are back. Uh, we're coming at you with some area problems, um, kind of the interpretations of a definite integral. So let's jump right in. So the definite integral, the integral from a to b of f of x dx, okay, gives us what's called the net area. Okay, so what I mean by the net area is that regions that are above the x-axis, like in the picture over here, this one and this one, those are considered positives. And the regions that are below the x-axis, such as this one's down here, are considered negative. Okay, so we've mentioned how the definite integral gives us an area, and we've, we've seen that sometimes it's, gi it's given us negative numbers, okay? And you may have thought to yourself, well, how can an area be negative, okay? The total area is not gonna be negative, okay? But the net area will be negative, and that just means that there is, the majority of the function is below the x-axis, okay? If the net area is positive, the majority or even the, the whole function is above the x-axis, at least in the interval from A to B that you're interested in. All right, so let's just kind of do this example here, um, kind of really hammering home the point that these definite integrals are referring to areas, okay? So we divided up this strange looking function over here into little subsections where we were able to get areas just using geometry formulas. So we have a bunch of rectangles, have a bunch of triangles, rectangles, just length times width, triangle, one half base times height, we were able to figure out all these areas, okay? And then we're just gonna kind of get these corresponding definite integrals over here. So this first one, the integral from zero to two of f of x dx, okay? So we're just taking a look at our function over here. Well, here's zero, here's where x equals two. Remember those limits of integration are talking about x values. Well, the area between our curve and the x-axis from zero to two is just two plus two. And so that means that integral of zero to two of f of x dx equals four, okay? If that feels like it's too easy, it, it's, it, that's meant to be very easy. So do not panic, okay? All right, let's do this next one, zero to five. Okay, so now we're integrating our function all the way to over there from zero to five. And we're taking a look at our function. Well, now we have two, two, three, three. So we add all those up, add that whole area, and we get 10. All right, awesome. Next one, we have five to seven. So here's seven, okay? Once again, we're looking for net area here. So net area treats those regions that are below the x-axis as negative. So we don't need to do anything to that negative three. That's gonna be the answer to our definite integral there. From five to seven, the area between our curve and the x-axis is negative three. All right, last one. Zero to nine. Okay, so now we're just interested in the entire function, this whole area. So from zero to nine. So we just gotta sum it up. I know from zero to five, it's 10. And taking a look from five to 10, it's gonna be negative eight. So it's just 10 minus eight, which equals two. Okay, so that's really what we are doing when we are when we are getting the definite integral. We are calculating that net area between the function and the x-axis. Okay, um, in this case, it was just, it was just easier to do using those geometry formula areas. But it's the same thing when we are when we are integrating. We are getting the same measurement that net area. All right, so let's do it uh, with a kind of kind of do it by integrating using a very familiar function, y equals sine x. So I have the graph drawn here and I have it cut off from zero to two pi. 
we're trying to find that net area between the graph of y equals sine x and the x-axis between 0 and 2 pi. Now, you can probably, if, if using some logic, just think about the net area here. We know kind of sine is a symmetric function. Um, just kind of thinking about this region. That's going to be positive. This region down here is going to be negative. If we combine those, and we're, we're getting the net area from 0 to 2 pi, we're going in with the likely idea that it's going to be 0, because those problems, those two areas are probably going to be just the positive and the negative version of each other. But let's kind of do the problem and, and, and really show that. OK. So in order to set up our definite integral to calculate this, we're just taking the integral of sine x dx And our interval, our, our limits of integration, are going to be 0 to 2 pi. All right, great. So now we just got to integrate. So I know the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. And we're evaluating negative cosine from x equals 0 to x equals 2 pi. So we just need to plug in. So we'll have negative cosine of 2 pi minus negative cosine of 0. All right. Well, hopefully you know that cosine of 2 pi is 1. So this term will just be negative 1. Over here, cosine of 0, also 1. So we have minus, and that, but that negative cosine of 0 is going to be negative 1. So we have negative 1 minus negative 1, or negative 1 plus 1, which gets us 0. All right, so just as we suspected at the beginning of the problem, we have confirmed it there, that 0 is that net area from 0 to 2 pi for the function sine x. OK, let's do another example. This time we've got a little polynomial. So let's find the uh, the net area between the graph of this y equals x cubed minus 4x squared plus 3x from 0 to 3. Okay. So once again, it's going to be a good idea just kind of think about going in. We have the graph here. Um, so here's the interval we're doing. Here's 0 to 3. Okay, just taking a look at our two regions, we have kind of this region that's above and then this region that's below. Okay, the vast majority of the function is below the x-axis. So we're going in with the idea that this answer should likely be negative. Okay, and if we get a positive number, we should go back and check what we did wrong. Okay, because the majority of that function, to my eye and hopefully your eye, is below the x-axis, so that's going to indicate to us the net area is going to be negative. Okay, so let's set up our integral. Here's our function. It's that x cubed minus 4x squared plus 3x. And we're getting it from 0 to 3. Okay, so first step, let's integrate. So that first term, just 1 fourth x to the fourth minus 4 thirds x cubed. And then plus 3 halves x squared. Hopefully you like some fraction work here, and we're evaluating that from x equals 0 to x equals 3. All right, so luckily um, some of our work's going to be made easier here. But So we're just plugging in these numbers. So 1 fourth, 3 to the fourth. Okay. 
So that's plugging in three, and then we need the other term where we plug in zero. And we notice here, we get a bit lucky. And when we plug in zero here, since there's gonna be zero in every single term, you're multiplying by zero, all of that is just gonna equal zero. So we'll just have minus zero. That kind of uh, simplifies our work quite a bit. That's not always gonna happen when you plug in zero, um, so be careful, okay? Actually, we noticed it didn't happen on that last problem we did. But here, it does throw a parade, makes the work a lot easier for us. All right, but we still have a lot of fractions to deal with. So one fourth, three to the fourth, I just, um, well, three to the fourth is gonna be 81. So we'll just have 81 fourths. Um, minus four thirds, three cubed. Well, I know three cubed is going to be 27. 27 times four, 108 divided by three, we'll just have 36. Uh, three squared is nine times three halves, 27 halves. All right, um, so let's just combine all these. So we'll have 81 fourths plus 54 fourths from the 27 halves. So 135 over four. And let's get that 36 and fourths. So it's going to be minus 144 fourths. So 135 minus 144, that'll just give us nine, negative nine fourths. And that is our net area. Okay, and it is confirmed that it is negative. So it looks like we did all of our work correctly. So there we go. Okay, so, so far we've been finding net area, okay, we want to kind of differentiate that from total area. So total area does not treat those regions that are below the x-axis as negative, okay, it wants them back as positive, okay, so it actually, to find the total area, it's going to be quite a bit more work. Here's the process, we kind of lay it out right here. You want to subdivide a and b at the zeros of f of x okay so here just kind of looking at our function over here we have these kind of two additional zeros here um let's call them c and d all right and so you want to find those zeros if you have a graph you can easily look at it if you have a function you're gonna to have to use some strategies to kind of find those zeros integrate f of x over each interval okay so what you're gonna have to do is as i said it's gonna be a little bit of work here you have to go from a to c okay that's our first interval from c to d and then finally from D to B, just moving left to right on each interval, kind of subdivided by our, our endpoints and our zeros, okay? And the last step is you're just going to, whatever you get for those answers, you're gonna add the absolute values of each of those answers all together. And that final answer that you get, that'll get you that total area. Okay, so it's a bit more work, um, but not too bad. Okay, as long as you can kind of, as long as you're comfortable with the integrating and the number crunching, um, it's the, the actual process is, is not too bad, although a bit tedious sometimes. Okay, so in our first example for total area, let's bring it back to basics. Um, that first kind of um, function we had with our geometry areas. So find the total area between the graph of f of x and the x-axis from zero to nine. So I'm gonna break this down very slowly here. If I wanna um, subdivide it at my zeros here. So my zero is that x equals five. Okay, 
So what I actually want to get here, I want to find the integral from 0 to 5 of f of x dx. And from 5 to 9 of f of x dx. Okay, so subdividing at the zeros and then integrating over both of those regions. And then after I find those answers, I'm going to be adding those absolute values together. So just following that exact process we wrote on that last slide. All right, so from 0 to 5, okay, this is what we did before. Okay, it's just that this area in this region here. Summing that up, we get 10. Same idea from 5 to 9. That definite integral is going to get us negative 8. Okay, so just adding up all those values in here. So now we are just adding up the absolute values of each of our regions. So it's just going to be 10 plus 8 equals 18. Okay. So that was kind of a, an easier example because we had all the areas, but that's the process that we want to take every time. Okay, so let's kind of see it on a, uh, kind of a, a, a more real function on this next one. All right, back to sine x. Okay, so I want to find the total area. We know the net area is going to be zero. We already found it a few slides ago, but let's try and find this total area. Okay, so we know our endpoints are zero to two pi. And we have a zero at pi, just looking at that graph. Okay, so I want to kind of subdivide my function into two integrals, zero to pi of sine x dx and zero to two pi. However, I'm going to use a, a, a property of sine here to kind of do a little shortcut for me to save my work. If you remember kind of what I was talking about before about the net area and how we kind of had a pretty good idea that it was going to be zero before because this, this and this were equivalent to each other, just the positive and negative each other. So we can kind of save us some time here if we simply just integrate one of these regions, find that area, and then just double it, okay? So if I just, instead of doing both of these and having to plug in all those numbers, do all that work, if I just do two times the integral of zero to pi of sine x dx, it might save me some time, okay? Um, give me more time to do who knows what in quarantine. All right, so we know that we can, when we have this constant out front, all right, we can just multiply it through by it after. So for right now, I'm just going to integrate sine. So we'll have two, um, and I know sine, the integral there is going to be negative cosine x. We're going to be evaluating this from zero to pi. All right, great. So we'll have two times negative cosine pi minus negative cosine of zero. All right, so cosine pi, if I kind of sketch the graph of cosine up here to remind us, Okay, so cosine of pi is going to be negative 1, but since we have a negative here as well, it's going to be negative 1 times negative 1, so it's going to be 1. And then cosine of 0, I know that is positive 1, but it's going to be multiplied by negative, so it's going to be negative, so we have 1 minus negative 1, which is going to be 2. And we also need to double it because we need to account for that second region as well. So 2 times 2 gets us 4. So there we go. That is the total area. All right. And it kind of told us that each of these regions of sine, and by extension cosine, are going to be the, going to have an area of 2 all right, or an, an 
And if they're below the x-axis, the net area would be negative 2. Okay. Polynomial here. All right. Find the total area. Luckily, we are, we're also given the graph here. Okay, that's not always going to be the case, but while we're getting started out, um, it's nice, nice to have the visual. So we're not going to be able to do the same kind of symmetry work here, but it's not going to be a problem. So let's kind of think about, we have our endpoints 0 to 3, so we just need to look for any zeros in the middle there. We know we have 1 here at 1. So I just need to split it up into kind of two integrals here, 0 to 1. and from 1 to 3. All right, and so I hope you guys can see that the integration is going to be the same each time, okay? So you don't need to do multiple integrations. You just integrate the function once you're done with that. It's, it's the plugging in step that you'll have to do a couple times here. So to integrate this function, okay, it's going to be... 1 fourth x to the fourth minus 4 thirds x cubed plus 3 halves x squared. We, we did that on the other problem. And then I'm evaluating this from 0 to 1. Okay, And then I'm also going to be evaluating it from 1 to 3 in a second as well. So let's do the 0 to 1 one first. We know that when we plug in 0 into it, it's going to be 0. So all we really need to get here is the 1 part portion. So we'll have 1 fourth of 1 to the 4th minus 4 thirds of 1 cubed plus 3 halves 1 squared minus 0 to evaluate this definite integral here. All right, and so we'd have just one of the fourths one, so we just have one fourth minus four thirds plus three halves. All right, some fraction work here. We need to get a common denominator for four, three, and two, so 12. So we'll have three twelfths minus 16 twelfths plus 18 twelfths. So 3 twelfths minus 16, so we have minus 13 plus 18, so we have 5 twelfths. 5 twelfths minus 0, so that'll be our first region, 5 over 12. Okay, awesome. And it's going to be good because that's we know that's going to be the value that we get when we plug in 1. Okay, which is going to be quite important. Um, so let's just kind of remember that value because we're going to need it in this next step. Um, so for me to have room, I'm just going to erase this for now. So now I've done that first integral, and I want to evaluate that integral again, this time just over the, the different limits of integration from 1 to 3. Okay, so luckily we already know that the 1, we get 5 twelfths, so we just need to do 3. And then it's all going to be all that minus 5 over 12, what we get when we plug in 1. So we're at, we'll have 81 fourths, this should feel familiar. Same problem as before, minus 36 uh, plus 27 halves. Minus 5 twelfths. All right, so we got 81 fourths um, plus 54 fourths, 135 fourths. And then 36 was 144 fourths. And we had negative 9 fourths.
Okay. So then we just need to add the two um, the two regions here. Okay. The absolute values of the two regions. Oh, actually, we have to subtract out by the 5 twelfths. So we need to do negative 9 fourths minus 5 twelfths, which is going to be do the work over here. Get a common denominator here. So it'll be negative 27 twelfths minus 5 twelfths equals. Um, negative 32 over 12. All right, so the final step for that total area needs to just add the absolute values of those two. So it's going to be 5 twelfths plus negative 32 over 12, which gets us 37 over 12. So that'll be that total area of the of kind of what I'm going to about to color in here. The total area here. Okay, so not the net area. We took the, the kind of two corresponding areas and then added the absolute values together to get that 37 over 12. All right, last example here because this uh, problem is getting a bit long. Okay, find the total area between the graph of y equals x cubed minus x squared minus 2x and the x axis from negative 1 to 2. Okay, so we're not given the easy way out this time. We're not given a graph. Okay, so we actually need to find the zeros. So we need to figure out the zeros for x cubed minus x squared minus 2x. So we just set that function equal to 0. Then I'm just going to factor it. So all of the terms have an x. So we'll have x. And then I can factor that quadratic there. So I'll have x times x minus 2 times x plus 1. So the three zeros are x equals 0, x equals 2, and x equals negative 1. All right, we had a brief moment of panic here because we thought, wow, we have two endpoints and three zeros to keep track of. It's going to be a lot of integration and a lot of plugging in. But luckily, these, are, these two are already handled by our endpoints. So really, thinking about we, we need to do kind of two integrals here. We just need to do from negative 1 to 0 and from 0 to 2. All right. So uh, I'm going to erase this work just to make sure we have room to do everything. And so we're now we're just going to set up our definite integral. Um, we just need to set up two of them because we have kind of those two regions. So we'll have from negative 1 to 0 for x cubed minus x squared minus 2x dx. And from 0 to 2 All right. So not too bad. All we got to do is now we just need to integrate and plug in some numbers. All right, luckily in both of our integrals, there is a zero, which is going to be nice. So we'll just integrate first. So we'll have 1 fourth x to the fourth minus 1 third x cubed minus x squared. And we're, plug we're evaluating from negative 1 to zero. And the same thing here, it's the exact same integration. And we're evaluating this one from 0 to 2. All right, so let's do the top one first. We notice, once again, that we plug in 0 into that polynomial where everything has an x, it's going to be 0. So we know we plug in 0, it's going to be 0. So 0 minus whatever we get when we plug in negative 1. 
So we'll have one fourth. All right, so we will have zero minus one fourth times one, negative one third times negative one, so plus one third minus one. Let's get those all into common denominator here. Uh, one fourth and one third, we gotta get these into twelfths again. A lot of, a lot of work with twelfths today. So we'll have three twelfths plus four twelfths minus twelve twelfths. So seven twelfths minus five twelfths. Zero minus negative five twelfths equals positive five over twelve. All right, looks familiar. It's a coincidence. 5 twelfths is not always the answer to uh, definite integrals. All right, uh, and the next one here. All right, once again, our, most of our computation is saved by the zero. So we know that when we plug in zero, we'll get zero here. So really, just what we need to calculate is what we get when we plug in two. So we'll have 1 fourth, 2 to the fourth, minus 1 third times 2 cubed minus 2 squared, and that's going to be minus 0. So 2 to the 4th is 16, and 1 fourth of 16 is 4. 2 cubed is 8, so minus 8 thirds, minus 4. Oh, look at this. Our work works out so nicely. Those 4s cancel out. And we just have negative eight thirds minus zero. So negative eight thirds. All right, so now we just need to do our final calculation here to get the total. And that's just adding those absolute values. So the absolute value of five twelfths plus the absolute value of negative eight thirds is just going to be. 5 twelfths plus 8 thirds. So let's get that to common denominator here. Uh, so 32 twelfths. So 5 twelfths plus 32 over 12 will equal 37 over 12. And there's our final answer. And that is it for this um, video. Hope you enjoyed.